Okay, so now I really want to go and define the term homotopic here. So we've already said that homotopic hydrogens are chemically equivalent. Uh, in this case, I want to get to it. So uh, you typically have to worry about this idea that they may be homotopic or something other designation when you have a carbon that has two hydrogens. And the procedure we kind of use to figure that out is we take those two hydrogens and we replace one of them with the letter Z. In this case, I replaced the dashed one with the Z on the left molecule here. And then you take and replace the other one with the letter, letter Z. So the one on the molecule on the right here, I replace the wedged hydrogen with the letter Z. And then you ask yourself, what's the relationship between these two compounds? So and in this case, these two compounds are identical. They're the same thing. It's the same molecule just rotated 180 degrees. If you rotate them, either one of them out of the plane 180 degrees, it would line up perfectly with the other molecule. So and, and when this occurs, that's how you know that the two hydrons are homotopic. So and it seems like kind of a, a little bit of a crazy process here and stuff like that. So but if you have two H's on the same carbon, a CH2, they may not end up being homotopic. And we'll see some different examples where the two structures we might draw replacing those H's with the letter Z may not be identical. So we've got a new vocab word to talk about. So we talked about homotopic. Now we've got to talk about what's referred to as enantiotopic. So and you might be familiar with the word enantiomers if you've already had that chapter in your course. Uh, some courses actually teach this before you've actually talked about stereoisomers, so I apologize if that's the case for you. So I'll try and uh, uh, be as thorough as I can here. Uh, but in this case, if we look at this particular CH2 right here, the 2H is bonded to that carbon. So you might look at the molecule first off and note that there are no chiral centers. So no atoms in this case that are bonded to four different groups. So uh, this carbon right here is bonded to three hydrogens that are identical. This one's got two identical bromines, two identical hydrogens, three identical hydrogens. There's no chiral centers in here whatsoever. No atoms bonded to four different groups. Uh, the question, though, is if you replace one of the H's on your CH2 with the letter Z, does it make that carbon a chiral center? And in this case, it indeed does. So I've got a CH3 on the left here that it's bonded to, a Z, an H, and then this big group with a couple carbons and a couple bromines. So, and... As a result, by repl sequentially replacing both H's with the letter Z, here the dashed one versus here the wedged one, the relationship between these two molecules ends up being that they're enantiomers. They're exactly mirror images of each other, but not identical. So, and when you uh, undergo this process of replacing each H with the letter Z, and the relationship ends up being enantiomers, that's when the two hydrogens end up being enantiotopic. So, and it turns out enantiotopic hydrogen atoms are chemically equivalent. You should know how to designate hydrons as being, uh, the relationship as being enantiotopic, but you should know that they're going to give rise to the same signal, they're chemically equivalent. So, if I wanted to go through with the total number of signals here, these three H's are all equivalent due to free rotation. These three H's are also all equivalent due to free rotation, and we just learned that these two H's being enantiotopic are also equivalent, and we'd only end up with three signals in the H and MR spectrum for this molecule. So the last vocab word we got to learn here is diastereotopic. So, and this is going to be important because diastereic hydrogens are not chemically equivalent and will give rise to different signals in the HNMR spectrum. So first thing I want to notice on this molecule is that there is a chiral center in this molecule already. This carbon right here is bonded to a hydrogen, a chlorine, a methyl, and an ethyl, four different groups, and he's a chiral center. So the most common example of diastereomers is when you have more than one chiral center, one that's in the same configuration, one that's in opposite configurations. So, and that's going to be kind of uh, convenient for looking at the relationship of diastereotopic hydrogens. So if we take a look at these two H's right here. So again, we're looking at the CH2s. With two H's on them, I'm going to replace one of them with the letter Z, here the dashed one, and then over here the wedged one, and then ask myself, what is the relationship between these two compounds? Well, these two compounds now have two chiral centers. This one's in the same configuration, and then this one is in an opposite configuration, and so we'd say that they're diastereomers. So two different chiral centers having four different groups, one in the same configuration, one in opposite configurations. Uh, when that's the case, they're not mere images, but they're not identical. And so they're stereoisomers that are not enantiomers. <laughs> in this case, we call them uh, diastereomers, non-superimposable, non-mere images. So, and when you undergo this process of se sequentially replacing the two H's with the Z, and you end up with a, a relationship of diastereomers, that's when your two hydrons here are going to be diastereotopic. 
cool. Most of the time, what this really reduces down to is that if you already have an actual true chiral center, and you can have more than one, but in the molecule, then every CH2 in the, uh, remaining in that molecule is going to end up having the two H's being diastereotopic. If we also look at what that implies about the number of signals here, so uh, because these are diastereotopic, they're actually going to be two different signals, two different environments in the molecule. We also have these three hydrons that are all equivalent due to free rotation these three hydrogens that are all equivalent due to free rotation, and then we have this hydrogen right here. And as a result, you've got one, two, three, four, five environments, and therefore you'd see five signals in the HNMR spectrum. So really tricky identifying the two diastereotopic hydrogens as different signals in different environments. So I want to have you look at three more examples here, and just have you look at how I approach this. So in this case, I want to know the relationship between these two hydrogens here, and if I look at the carbon they're on, so I have to ask myself is if replacing one of these with a letter Z would make it a chiral center? Well, in this case it would not because it, each this carbon already has two identical ethyl groups, and so replacing one of these with a Z would not give it four different groups. So right off the bat, these two hydrogens, if I'm not going to form a chiral center here, just makes these homo topic. So if we look at the next example here, and technically it's the same molecule, just looking at two different hydrogens here. So if I replaced one of these with the letter Z, let's say the wedged one or the dashed one, this carbon would indeed have four different groups. So it'd have a Z, a hydrogen, a methyl, and a propyl. So it is going to make it a chiral center. And at that point, we can figure out it's either enantiotopic or diastereotopic is the relationship. There are no true chiral centers in this molecule, so no other chiral centers in this molecule of any sort. So usually that means they're going to end up being enantiotopic. So and in this case, that is exactly the case. And these are enantio topic and therefore they're going to be chemically equivalent. So if we look at all the hydrogens in this molecule then, we've got hydrogen, 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 and again all of these, there is a big plane of symmetry right down the middle of this molecule. So if we start circling the different environments here, so all of these six H's are all chemically equivalent. So all four of these H's are chemically equivalent, and then we have these two being chemi chemically equivalent. And so overall, this molecule would end up with three signals. Now, I want to finish this off with one very tricky example. And the question is, how are these two H's related? We're going to find out they're diastereotopic, and it's a little bit tricky. So first thing I want to look in, there's no chiral centers in this molecule. You might think that that carbon right there is a chiral center, but again, he's bonded to an ethyl group on the left and an ethyl group on the, light, on the right, so he does not have four different groups. He's not a chiral center. So there's no chiral centers in this molecule. Second question we'll look and say is, if I change one of these H's out for the letter Z, would it make it a chiral center? And it indeed would. It would have a Z, an H, a methyl, and then this big three carbon group with a chlorine attached. So that'd be four different groups. So right off the bat, they're not homotopic. They're either enantiotopic or diastereotopic. And normally, if replacing one of the H's with the letter Z forms a chiral center, and it would be the only chiral center present, so that means it's going to be uh, and antiotopic, and they'd be chemically equivalent. The tricky part here, though, is that if I do replace that with a letter Z, and let's draw one of those out. So, so the problem is that when I replace that with a letter Z, now the right side of this molecule is not equivalent to the left side. I can't say that this ethyl is the same as this ethyl, because this ethyl has a Z, and this one doesn't. And all of a sudden, that makes the carbon with the chlorine a chiral center now. And so it's a chiral center right here. This is a chiral center right here. Had we done this the other way, so now we'll put the wedged hydrogen, but the dashed position to get the Z. So and if we take a look at the relationship here, so we've got again two chiral centers. So this one is in the same configuration between both molecules. No difference there. But this one is in the opposite configuration. And so one chiral center is the same, one chiral center different. These are diastereomers, and therefore these two hydrogens are actually diastereotopic. And therefore we're going to lead to different signals in the molecule. And so if we kind of look at all the hydrogens in general, So again, there is some symmetry in this molecule. And so all six of these hydrogens are definitely going to be equivalent. And then you've got this guy. So 
and then between these two you got the wedged and you got the dashed and we just found out they're not equivalent but due to symmetry the two wedged ones would be equivalent and the two dashed ones would be equivalent so we end up with one two three four signals in the HNMR spectrum. Super tricky example of two hydrants being diastereotopic.